Out of the big three, Bleach was always the one that didn't really get the treatment it deserved. The moment it stopped being the story people expected it to be, more and more readers and viewers unfairly turned their back on a series that still had a lot of potential. And some of those people drew the line as early as the Soul Society arc, which is crazy to think about. It's no secret that the anime and manga were each rushed to endings for their own reasons, which is a real shame for a lot of diehard fans that grew up watching this series. That's why it's especially ironic that out of all of the big three, it's probably Bleach that has had the most direct impact on the new generation of shonen. Of course Naruto and One Piece have left their mark on the industry, they're just too popular not to. Still, when you really start looking into it, it's kinda shocking just how Bleach has had much more of a direct impact. I'm Zero, this is Kado, and today let's talk about the impact of Bleach. I think most people would agree that the likes of Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, Tokyo Ghoul, and Black Clover are what most people would call modern shonen. Looking at these three, it doesn't take long to find inspirations taken directly from Bleach. I do probably need to add the strong disclaimer that just because something took inspiration from something doesn't mean one of the series is a ripoff. Inspirations happen all the time. Bleach was a series read by tens of millions of people, by dozens of mangaka growing up. It would be strange if it had no influence on their work. That's pretty much how it works in every medium. It's why it's impossible to find a modern fantasy that doesn't have a little bit of Tolkien in it. Everything that comes out today is inspired by work that came before. It's also not to say that any of these series are inspired just by Bleach. Every series has more than one influence. It's why despite talking a lot about Bleach's influence on Jujutsu Kaisen, there's a reason most people think Gojo is just Kakashi 2.0. Bleach itself isn't completely unique. Guts and Ichigo share some very similar designs and backstories for a reason, and he also has some DNA from Yusuke Urameshi for sure. A substitute Soul Reaper is pretty similar to a spirit detective. Lastly, being inspired by or even taking ideas directly from something else is fine. It's all about where a series goes from there, and what it does with the inspirations going forward. I think all of the modern shonen are pretty different from the big three we all watched growing up, especially in terms of pacing, structure, and tone. Shout out to the Beasties, they put out a great video a few weeks back called Manga Will Never Be This Long Again. Check it out. These newer shonen series seem to be carving out their own path by utilizing the popular themes and aesthetics from stories that came before. They wear their influences on their sleeve, and they do a good job of it. In the case of Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, and Jujutsu Kaisen, these series revolve around organizations of people devoted to fighting human-killing monsters, especially in more urban settings than you'd usually find in shonen. In Jujutsu Kaisen, these are curses. In Demon Slayer, they're demons. In Tokyo Ghoul, they're ghouls. In Chainsaw Man, they're... demons again. All of these seem like they're, at least in part, inspired directly by Hollows and Bleach. Honestly, now that I think about it, outside of My Hero Academia, I can't even think of a shonen that doesn't involve curses, spirits, or ghosts in some form or another. Or a battle shonen that doesn't involve fighting big monsters with swords. Now, obviously this isn't all thanks to Bleach, but it's also not wrong to say that Bleach is a big reason why we're where we are right now. Heck, in Jujutsu Kaisen, many of the curses share the same visual aesthetic as Bleach's Hollows. You don't need to look past the first special grade in Jujutsu Kaisen to see what's likely an intentional homage. A special group of people fight these monsters. In Demon Slayer, they use swords and breathing techniques. In Jujutsu Kaisen, they use cursed energy. This also isn't very far off from the Soul Reaper Zanpak To, spiritual pressure, or Kido, is it? Then we have the hierarchies to consider. In both Demon Slayer and Black Clover, the heroes are all organized under captains with their own squads, companies, or teams. All of these have their own duties and purposes. There's also Seraph of the End in Chainsaw Man. I've always liked this kind of structure in Shonen. It's a way to make the world feel big but not too overwhelming. Usually we're only following a single one of these teams or squads per arc, as the scope of the show slowly expands over time, allowing the audience to focus on different characters and stories. This also is also directly traced from the Soul Society in Gotei 13. The squad captains in Bleach are no different from the Magic Knight captains in Black Clover or the Hashiros in Demon Slayer. These two series take the concept and kinda go in opposite directions, which is interesting to see. Demon Slayer doesn't really care much about the average recruit, it focuses almost entirely on just the Hashiros, the squad captains in Bleach. 
Black Clover has a much bigger focus on making sure that all of the different squads feel as unique as possible, something which didn't always come through in Bleach itself. Neither series really feels like it's copying the other, they don't even really feel like they're copying Bleach, not until you dig a little deeper. Another fun influence comes from Bleach's Espada. These are exceptionally powerful hollows. Yes, I know they're technically a Roncar, and they're the main villains for very big chunks of the story. They all have their own quirks, abilities, and storylines, yet they all kind of work together in a small group of their own, in contrast to the protagonists. You only really need to look at a side-by-side -side comparison of the Espada and the Upper Moons to see the similarities. The general concept is pretty much identical, though they both go off in different directions. All of the unregistered special grades in Jujutsu Kaisen are kind of doing the same thing too, though that's a bit less set in stone than the Espada or the Upper Moons. In Jujutsu Kaisen, we even have the former member of the monster hunting group go over to join and work with the strongest group of monsters. In Bleach, this was Aizen going over to take over Waco Mundo. In Jujutsu Kaisen, this is Ghetto going over to join the unregistered special grades. Aizen and Ghetto are obviously very different characters with very different roles in their series, and yet the base concept is too similar to be a coincidence. It's also kind of impossible not to draw the massive parallel between Ichigo and Itadori. Ichigo was a relatively normal kid with the unique ability to see ghosts, until he one day ran into Rukia, before becoming a substitute Soul Reaper. Itadori was a slightly less normal kid who was ridiculously physically strong, until he one day ran into Megami, before becoming a sorcerer. Both characters are haunted and cursed by a dark power within themselves, their dark halves, that are constantly threatening to take them over, to turn their ideals on their head. Ichigo has white, the hollow inside him that's both the source of his power and the thing he must struggle with for most of Bleach. Itadori has Sukuna inside him, the strongest cursed spirit ever who Yuji must struggle with for most of Jujutsu Kaisen. On the surface, both of these concepts are the same, or well, they start off the same. Ichigo's Hollow and Sukuna are vastly different, as we find out later on in their respective series, but the core concept starts out the same. Even Ichigo's and Yuji's personalities and motivations are similar, with both only really wanting power to protect the people in their power. Even look at the character design in general. It seems like every year, anime characters look more and more like, well, real people. You really don't need to go far back to see entire seasons of anime where every character had eyes that were too big or too round, and builds that didn't really make sense outside of an anime. One Piece is obviously the biggest example of this. The anatomy in One Piece has gotten equal mockery and praise on different character designs, which is all the more reason to appreciate the variety. But the fashion in One Piece is often… strange. Definitely contributes to the weird character design of this series. And that weird character design definitely adds a bit of charm to the story that's hard to find elsewhere. But the industry as a whole has moved in the exact opposite direction. Instead, they look much more like Bleach characters, who all look much more reasonable and traditional in comparison. Many Battle Shonen before Bleach tried to carve out their own sense of aesthetics through the use of fictional fashion. But this then allowed Kubo to make his characters look more distinct by having them dress in fashionable clothes for our world following the lead of sports series like Hikaru no Go. There's a reason why all of those X-series redrawn as Bleach characters turn out so well. It's because in some way, half of the work is already done for you. Even when this influence isn't super direct, it's still there. Many mangaka grew up watching Bleach, drawing the characters and drawing the Zanpakuto. Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia, even said he spent more than his fair share of time drawing his own Zanpakuto designs, citing it as one of the big things that got him into drawing manga in the first place. The creator of Jujutsu Kaisen has made no secret of the fact that he's been influenced by Kubo, he's confirmed as much in more than one interview. Actually, both of the authors of Black Clover and Demon Slayer have said the same thing, which is no surprise. Usually we have to speculate and draw similarities ourselves, but Akutami pretty much just told us that Kenpachi was a huge influence for Toto, and it's easy enough to see how. You might have noticed that Jujutsu Kaisen has the most references to Bleach, and out of all the modern shonen, it is probably the one most inspired by it. I think of Jujutsu Kaisen as more of a what Bleach could have been. We mentioned Hollows and the monster extermination aspects of Bleach, but in the grand scheme of things, that wasn't a huge part of Bleach. Not really. That's how the show started off. 
but it soon went in its own direction with Aiza. Jujutsu Kaisen is what happens if Bleach focuses on those roots, refining them over the course of its run. That's why if you want to draw parallels between the two, then you really don't need to look further than the earliest chapters of each. It's just another example of what we talked about at the start of the video. It's not about what you copy, or even how much you copy. It's about where you go from there. Still, even discounting Jujutsu Kaisen, I think I've shown you how Bleach has had a hand in most major shounen these days, even indirectly. It's rather ironic that the Thousand Year Blood War got animated when it did, not long after the first runs of many of the shows inspired. Bleach is ending for good with the second part of the Thousand Year Blood War, but I doubt its influence on shounen is ever going to end. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe, share this video with someone who will like it, and turn on that notification bell. Before I go, I just want to give an extra special shout out to all of the lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash kadoyt. We're super active in our patron discord server, occasionally throwing some late night anime and movie watch parties. So if that's something you're interested in, pledge just a single dollar to get an invite. You can also follow us on Twitter at kadobeyond. Links to everything will be in the description. Again, my name is Zero, this is Kado, and thank you all for listening to my dumb rants. Subscribe for more.